start the meeting with Bill. He's going to do the prayer. Yes. Can we bow our heads, please? Dear Lord, as we come here tonight, we have much to be thankful for. Our great country, our great state, a great community, and of course, we're thankful for the Kingwood Photo Club. This club has provided inspiration and leadership for its members for almost 20 years. We're especially thankful for the leadership of the club as they continue to give their time and effort to keep the club moving along in a forward direction. We give thanks for our presenter tonight as she gives an insight into another aspect of our chosen field of interest. As in all things, we pray we remember your teachings in every aspect of our lives. In thy name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Bill. That was very nice. Uh, Pam, membership? Yes. yes. Okay. Um, we have one new member, and he is here tonight. It's Frank Roberto. Frank? Well, hello, everyone. Oh, hi, okay. Frank. We're glad to have you join our group, and um, we want to know, how did you find out about us? Uh, <laughs> we want to shut down that avenue. No. <laughs> I'm, not, uh, I'm not sure. I was, just, I was just trolling around looking for things to do, and I just kind of um, ran across this. Maybe it was, oh, it might have been one of those uh, uh, weekly, uh, not week, monthly magazines that come around free in the mail. Mm -hmm. Yes, the forest nice. code probably. That's the forest it. image. That's it. It was probably the forest image. Yeah, that's right. Yes. Oh, good. Well, we welcome you. We have a very nice group. We do lots of things usually. Right now during COVID, we've been curtailed. But we do have um, a lot on our website. Take advantage of the classes and other things. And as soon as we get going again uh, with different outings, it will all be put up on the website and take advantage of those. Well, we're glad you. to have you tonight. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, and we have 76 memberships now, so we have 76 trombones. Oh my goodness. That would make a lot of noise. Yes, it would. So we are very appreciative to all our members though. They help make the club what it is. And thank you, Pam, for your report. Good job, uh, and this man. is just a this is just a heads up. You, everyone has seen it, Frank. Uh, especially for you, we have a Facebook, and on the Facebook there is a lot of uh, discussions going on, and uh, people will post things from the outlook for the po sorry the pop ups also from places. So uh, that's something for you to watch out for and look for. Plus, besides the website. And then Chuck, do you want to talk about the library series? Uh, yeah, we, uh, uh, we've been doing uh, workshops every month in the library, uh, various workshops, uh, various topics, uh, uh, quite, quite extensive. Uh, last month, we did one on uh, editing using your mobile devices. We've done one on uh, iPhone photography. We've done one at, uh, on, on night photography. Uh, there's been quite a few of them. Uh, right now, we sort of run out of ideas. Uh, and run out of uh, people willing to give workshops, although Kathy said that she would do one. All right. Uh, Chuck, I, I can jump back in. I think I'm back uh, in the thing again. So uh, you and I can talk a little bit later on, but I think I can volunteer to fill in one of these ones. Yeah, so right now we have nothing scheduled at this point next month. Uh, so, uh, but uh, certainly would like to get them scheduled again. Uh, I just don't have any more ideas in my head, so. Um, the, uh, we, we do have another meeting that goes on uh, uh, at uh, every Wednesday, photographers uh, uh, Zoom lunch. Uh, it, we talk uh, about everything that has to do except photography. Uh, we have, we've talked everything from bidets to I don't can't remember what. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's a good time. I can't remember what, what it was last week. You know, I know what it was. It was Chris uh, Summers. I don't see his He's not here yet. I just sent him the link. He does. He never gets the link every week. Oh, I'm here. Chris is on. Oh, there, there he is. Fine. Okay. Hey, Chris, you're here. We talked about Chris's uh, handiwork uh, this last week uh, at, at lunch. Uh, we're all in awe of his cabinet making abilities. Uh, we, we don't think his photography is so hot, but he does know. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> no, that's good. Uh, and and I and, and you know I encourage if you if you if you don't have the link and you want to join us it really is good I mean John's joined us a lot of times uh, Chris has joined us uh, the Emersons are always there I'm usually there Pam's always there uh, 
Anyways, good good time. That's all I got here. Uh, and then the mobile editing. Did you want to talk about this? This oh. was a really uh, cool little video that you did, Chuck. I was very impressed. Well, I'll uh, I'll run that video if you want. I'll... Yeah. Uh, do you want me to unshare here? Yeah, if you would, just for a second. Okay. See if I can find where my uh, stop share. There, now you got it. I, 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 this is a, a really a promo video that I, I did for uh, for the workshop. The workshop's over, but uh, I just wanted to let you know what you missed. Can you see the uh, workshop? It says Kingwood Photo Club workshops there. Yep. Uh -huh. And uh, oh, I, I should do something before I do that. I got to get the uh, stop sharing. I got to get my sound optimized here. Share sound optimized. Okay. Um, there. There. Okay. Now you should be able to see it. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, that was good. That was really cool. I, 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 think, I think Blake Edwards is going to have to have a word with you. <laughs> that, that may be deserving of an Emmy. Well, that, that was, uh, I, I try to do things in an understated way. I always have been. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> Anyways, uh, glad you liked it. Yeah, it was a good little workshop. We, it, it was pretty informal, but we enjoyed it. Oh. Chuck, that sounded like a Pink Panther. Well, yeah. it was It was that style. Yeah. That's right. It was a little bit that style. <laughs> Okay. Will you go back, Kathy. I got this. I yeah, stopped the share. I was just going back. Okay, now we're back. No, that was that was excellent. You wouldn't be available to do one of our presentations and do the mobile editing for that, would you? Uh, we could do that at some point. I mean, it, it depends okay. on what you'd like to do. We can do that. Uh, yeah. There's a, there's I, a lot I, there. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a lot there, and, and having done it, uh, I would do it differently a second time. We would try to cover too much. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, I would sort of narrow it down a little bit, but you, you learn by doing those things, right? Right, in, uh, Ellen, you were there, right? Yes, we did. My we did. We did cover a lot. We, you know, we'd probably narrow it down to maybe one app or something. Uh, yeah, she so, actually, so, Ellen, I actually posted some stuff on uh, on Snapseed that she used from your uh, workshop. Mm -hmm. well, yeah. yeah, yeah, that's right. That's that's uh, from uh, from Ellen, I think, right? Yes, yeah. it was. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Snapseed is the way we spent most of the time on Snapseed. We went into Lightroom Mobile a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think my phone is too old. It doesn't seem to do very well. <laughs> Mike's saying, well, you should have told me that before your birthday. <laughs> so anyway, but thank you, Chuck. Yeah. Um, and then Virtual SIG, you still have those the third Thursday of each month. Well, the post-processing SIG uh, is sort of fallen by the wayside a little bit. We've, we've again, uh, the energy has run out. I don't know if it's summer or whatever it is. Uh, and uh, we'll have to, we'll try to research, re, re get that going again at some point. But it, it it's, I think right now it's in, in the 80s. Mm -hmm. And then Jim Everard, um, the same with the portrait SIG. It's kind of, because of COVID and stuff, we just don't have a place to go yet. Yeah, it's pretty much what Chuck said too. We, uh, uh, we've canvassed the library, the community center, some of the churches, and you know, right now we just can't seem to come up with anybody that's willing to give a, uh, a venue, you know, a meeting room that's large enough to do for the in-studio uh, in type uh, stuff. We, you know, we can do the outside, but you know, who wants to go outside with mosquitoes and 120 degree oh, temperature? <laughs> we did that last, what, last year, or year before last, and in April, and it was like 99 degrees. So, mm -hmm. but anyway, uh, yeah, as soon as we can free stuff up, uh, we, we do have a couple of folks that we can 
that are willing to model. Uh, in fact, Pam, Pam Walton has a relative that has graciously volunteered. So we're still looking for more people once we actually get this thing going. In the meantime, uh, on behalf of the club, we're still doing some things. I, last night I did a community event of about 120 people. And then next month, Kathy and I are scheduled to do another community event that's gonna be about 150 people, I think, something like that. So anyway, we're, we're getting the name out and everything, and that's about, about what's going on. Would you want another shooter for that event in August, Jim? I'm if sorry? Would you, with 150 people, would you want another shooter for that event? Well, last time we did it, we we did okay with two people, uh, and I kind of hesitate. I mean, I guess we could possibly use a third, but let's let's talk about it and see. Uh, at this point, uh, okay. I don't want too many people. You know, I'm taking taking photographs, but uh, yeah, we'll talk about it. Okay. And Ellen uh, had volunteered her grandchildren, I think, for models. Oh, is that right? Yeah, for subjects. I think she did. Didn't yeah, you? I think one or, one or two of them uh, would probably uh, be yeah. willing to do it. Yeah. yeah, so I think we have- well, That's great. Yeah, that's uh, great. We just need to get the room and, and set up some dates. That's exactly where we're at right now. And it sounds like things, uh, we just got a, a, somebody forwarded something about the, uh, some of the hospitals are starting to lock down again. It kind of sounds like it's headed back the other way a little bit. So hopefully it uh, it won't get any, uh, get to where it was before. Yeah, let's hope. Keeping fingers crossed. Yeah. Okay, we have a winner. Chris Summers, Heat. I have to say, I was very disappointed mine didn't make it. <laughs> <laughs> you, you were you were close close kathy way to go chris you were set you were second and third well and i'm 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 honored to be uh, uh voted for this i will I'll, if it's okay i'll tell you a, a real quick this is in namibia and when i was my my wife had a big project in, in schwakamund which um, I know Connie and David are familiar with. They've been there. It's on the coast of Namibia, which is on the north uh, north of South Africa on the on their um, Atlantic coast. And uh, I did like some eco tours where I, I did a desert tour where we learned a lot about the desert. I, it was like an all day driving around the desert and photo opportunities. And I did one also for birding in, in that area, which was interesting and company. Um, but I took this picture and these people are actually out there. It's like, I know I talked to Chuck and he said, did you like Photoshop those? And it's like, no, I, uh, we were told to go take pictures in the desert. And I looked up and all I saw were all these people out in the desert. So, <laughs> but I'm going to be honest, I did do some photo manipulation with the sky and the sun because it was a very boring, flat day. Um, so anyway, but thank you. It, I, I guess it says hot. I don't know. I was trying to heat. And it was, uh, that was the theme. So are you going to take Chuck up on his his uh, prize, a uh, private tour of East Penn Park? Isn't that right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nice. Hey, uh, I was going to ask somebody, do we have we have some background noise going on? Does that, do other people hear it? Yes, yes I do. Oh, I just Very wondering. distracting. If you, have, if you have a TV going in the background or doing something like that, you mute yourself or do something. Yeah. I hear a dog, but it's not Bill? mine. Bill? <laughs> <laughs> Can you mute yourself? Maybe it's yours. Yours. I'm not sure what's going on. Okay. Yeah, it's a little. It's almost hard. like an echoes. Okay. Yeah, it is. Yeah, I think it's. Stopped. I think it just cleared up. I think it's stopped. Okay. okay. All right. Excellent. Good. We're good. All right. So yeah. anyway, Chuck, so can you tell us who took the other pictures that were entered? Um, I'd like to know who took those oh, others. Well, yeah, sure. Good. Sure, I can. I can tell you that. Uh, Let's uh, let's just say no. There were good some good. There were some good pictures in here. Uh, you want me to give you back the screenshot? Uh, if you would for a second, I'll I'll yeah. just I'll, I'll go to our website and and show you the pictures. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. They uh they I thought that there were good pictures. There were good pictures. It, um, it was challenging. It was good to see. I, I, and I'm I'm happy people are are turning out for this. Yeah, yeah. We we uh, we need more turnout though. Uh, yeah. I, I think we need more turnout. Uh, uh, can you see the screen mini contest here? Mm -hmm. Yep. 
so as you as you go down you'll see here here are the pictures we i wish we had more Chuck, could uh, you maximize maximize that window uh let's see I, I let's see if i click on this um that doesn't do what you want you, you see it big enough there or well no? your brow your browser window can you make it bigger on the screen sure i can there in the upper right I don't know how to work an apple. Okay, no, is that is that big enough there? Yeah, that's nice. Yeah, yeah that's okay. good. Okay, that's one I took in uh, Myanmar. Uh, Very nice. Yeah. Uh, it was a hot evening, and the sunsets in Myanmar are, are beautiful because the air is so polluted. <laughs> it's just it's just really polluted there. It's a so it's it's a beautiful area. Uh, let me go to the next one here. Uh, how to, uh, since people don't put their names on it, I'm not sure who took this one. But I, I thought this was thinking outside the box. This yeah, was good. Yeah. Yeah. This is, well, I, I love the way the yeah, focus. What's is that yours? Yeah, that's mine. Okay, Very I nice. love this. I love the focus. Hot pepper. Hot pepper. Yeah. yeah. And the yeah. focus is good on that. You know, that's I like good. that one. That, that's thinking outside. <laughs> yeah, this is Kathy. One of Kathy's, I think. Kathy, right? No, oh, that's oh. Steve Hansen. That's mine Steve? as well. Okay. Yeah, that was from uh, uh, the uh, cauldron in in uh, the Big Island about three years ago, four years ago. Ah, okay. Oh. Ah. Really cool. Yeah, that's nice. That's nice. That is cool. Then we come to uh, we got a dog around here somewhere. <laughs> we got two Chris's here. Um, it was hot. <laughs> it was hot. Then we got uh, okay. That's another one of mine in Arizona. That's nice. Oh, oh I loved that, was, that one. Yeah, that was hiking one day above. Uh, Trying to say it's much Scottsdale somewhere, but uh, I love the way the sun outlined the um, sapporo. Well, you can't really see it very clearly cool. here, but the little thorns, yeah, they all get lit up by the sun. That actually would have been a good submission for this month too. Yeah, the shadows, shadows. yeah, they were shadows, yeah. the shadows. Yeah. That's right. Uh, this is this is cool, Kathy. Is this yours? Uh, yeah, that is from yeah. 2014 Wings Over Houston. That's called the Shockwave. It is a jet semi. And I tell you, when it went by us, when we were in the photo pit, you could feel the heat. It, yeah. was, it was amazing. <laughs> and you can tell, you can see the guy, it's rippling. See yeah. how the, the ground is, the, the air is just rippling. That is the yeah. heat. And you I know. mean, it's shocked. It was just, it was really neat. They haven't had it back since, but it was a cool uh a cool thing to see yeah, yeah that's, that's, that, that is one got good. my vote <laughs> did huh. okay yeah thank you and uh let's see this no this another one and that is from hawaii luau that was the yeah. flamethrower so yeah. that was hot yeah. dance hey and when you when, just for your information you guys sign on you know you can't add comments down here see in the, the bottom right ah. uh, if i hit that plus sign i could put my name and a comment in there okay and then hit send so if you ever now, want to make comments on these things that's that's you you can do that now to vote you just hit the star just go right? here and now if i if i try to hit this star for example uh it you'll see it it uh and then it There's comes up oh, contest is over yeah. ah, okay. but that's what yeah. that's what you do yeah uh, and you can only vote once mm -hmm. um so that's 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 the way that works and then we got one more i think this is another is this chris yeah. that's that's me that's maybe also <laughs> yeah that's as a driver bed. <laughs> yeah, that looks that a looks little like crusty. California. <laughs> oh yeah, no kidding. Yeah, that's a little crusty. I think that was it, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, that was it. Yeah. yeah so that, that. next month it's uh, blue. Yeah, next next month uh, uh, heat blue, August blue, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah so it's very cool. open to interpretation, whatever you think blue means to you. Yeah, it could be a uh, blue day, <laughs> blue sky, blue mood, blue blue yeah. angels, you know, whatever. Oh, blue angels, cool. Yeah. yeah. Oh, the right. trouble is, I'm it, if I'm going to that uh, skies uh, thing, whatever it's show air show in October, October, that's too late. But that, yeah. you know, <laughs> I think we'll be, of, we'll be out of town for that. And I have a, a in the pop ups, I have that. Yeah. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, so do right, I let me let me I'll, I'll stop the share and let it give it back to you. Uh, thank you. Oh, it's a two-step process. Okay. Do you still know? Whatever. All right. Very good. <laughs>
Okay, so upcoming day trips. Anne cannot be here. Um, Jim, did you want to talk about this? The yeah, I, <clears throat> not much more than what's on there is we'll, we, we'll have to decide, whoever decides they want to go down there, we'll have to decide to, do we want to go on Friday the 20th or Saturday the 21st? One is you watch them sculpt the sand sculptures. The other one is you see them finished and they're uh, being judged. I would say we'd go down Saturday, but- Friday would be a lot less crowded. Friday would be less crowded. That's gonna be a factor. Much less crowded. But we'll, we'll let Ian call that. Uh, in fact, Ian's gonna be out pretty much all of August. So we'll- She's gonna be uh, gone for three weeks. Yeah. Says there she won't be available for it. No, yeah. no. So if, if someone wants to go, if they can say like, hey, I'll be person to coordinate it, um, let Ann go so we can put that on our website. <clears throat> so I don't know. It's it's going to be hot and it's going to be dependent on the weather too. If it rains, it gets rained out. So uh, a lot yet to be determined on that, but that's where it's at. And it is a $15 parking fee, which means everybody in the view, it's just one $15 parking fee. And that's also admission for everyone in the car. Good. And then upcoming trips. This is the Wings Over Houston in October that you were talking about, Chuck. Yeah. And right now, if, you be, if you're not a member of Wings Over Houston, if you become an insider, then you can get um, very discounted tickets, especially for like the photo, uh, photo pit where Chuck is. And then Chris was saying you wanted to go to the Sunrise, which would, have, would be cool. And those go very quickly. I don't even know if there's any of those left. Yeah. yeah. But that is, that is, if you've not been there, this, it's a wonderful um, show. It really is. I don't know. Are the Blue Angels coming back this year? They, haven't they have two. They have two, they have two uh, military teams, the Blue Angels and, and a Canadian team. Oh, okay. Yeah, the Blue, it's been three years, I think, since yeah. the Blue Angels have been back. Yeah, they're going to be two teams this year. Yeah, and then Chris, you put on Facebook about Big Boy coming. Yeah, I, I saw one of the other clubs in the Woodlands posted this, and now I've since seen some other uh, area uh, train clubs have posted. It's it's Big Boy is pretty cool because they're they're not going to run that train much longer. It's an old steam locomotive, and there I think there's only like eight left, and this is the only one that still runs. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's pretty cool. Yeah, when it was retired, after it left here the last time, I thought they had retired it for good. So I was really surprised that that was coming back. And that is Tuesday, the, what, August 17th? And Yeah, uh, there's, there's a couple of days. And, and it, it's one of those things that if we want to do it as a, a like a pop-up meeting, there's going to be, a, they're going to go into downtown Houston at the train station there, uh, where the, the old Union Pacific station but there's also, if you go, Hearn is not that far in Hempstead, Navasota. They're doing some other stops. So it's up to people if they want to say, go <clears throat> try and catch it, uh, like you guys did, I think, with the, the bush train uh, mm -hmm. that went through. So uh, it, it's just a matter of, well, we just figure out those, those days if people are available. Yeah, don't they have, don't they have a map, too, of, of its route? They do, and I'll, I'll share that maybe with you and, and with Chuck. We'll try and get it up on the website or something. Okay, okay let's yeah. do that. Yeah, yeah I now think... The, no, the, day, the day after it's on display in Houston, it heads for Beaumont in Louisiana. It's coming through Huffman, and it'll stop in Huffman for about 20 minutes. And there's a they, they <laughs> where it will stop. So yeah, kind close. of like it, what they did in, in uh, spring. They that's stopped right. for, you know, 20 minutes and they took off again. Right. So, but that, it, it really, if it's, it's really a neat train to go see, it definitely would be worth it, especially if you've not seen yeah. it before. So that's something to look forward. Now, these are, when I talked about the Facebook posts, uh, these are some of the posts and I'm just cutting and pasting from, from Facebook. So I thank you all for your submissions because it fills the page. But uh, the Emersons went to the um, Warren Rare Native Plant Preserve. Yeah. Connie, can you talk about that for a sec? Is she there? Only after she unmutes. <laughs> oh, <laughs> OK. It's, it's actually Connie the, or Dave, whichever. Yeah, or John, because he was or part John, of the job yeah. trip, too. Because this is actually the Watson Rare Native Plant Preserve. And it is in Warren, Texas, and it's surrounded by the big thicket. Um, John May can jump in more because I can't remember how many acres it is. It's not very big. 
and like 15 uh, acres maybe. and it's just something that they've preserved and this has been going on for let's just say at least 50 years this little piece of land uh, was started by a lady and then when they passed it down it became a 501c ah. and it's just got a little dirt path with little cord boardwalks over the little swampy parts but it's all these different plants and they they bloom at different times and so there's always something and some of these things are tiny they're not like a big plant you're going to find mm -hmm. so you can see john they're squatting down to get the little blooms on stuff um, but they do have volunteers that you can contact beforehand or go on their own facebook page uh, mm -hmm. and you can contact them beforehand and they'll they'll be glad to give you a tour if you're coming out or you can just go and walk through on your own that might be a nice uh pop-up trip to go to yeah, how far away is that how far? I don't know. It takes an hour and an hour and forty-five minutes, an hour and a half, something like that. Okay, so it's not impossible. No, 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 no. especially because you can have lunch afterwards. Yeah, it's not the bottom line. Good place for lunch. It seems like all of our <laughs> several <problems>. ideas, Chris. <laughs> yeah. No, but that that sounds really, really interesting. And so it's uh, dirt paths with boardwalks. So you're not really walking through. You're just staying along the path. Yeah. Yeah, you don't really need to go off the path. Okay. Um, the planting, yeah. There's no, there are no organized plantings. These things are scattered all over this area. Mm -hmm. And there's no signs telling you what plant is what. It's uh, this lady started this by going out into the big thicket and getting unique plants and transplanting them onto her property. Oh. And so there's, she wasn't very organized about it. I mean, they're just all over the place. And so uh, that's why you have to go up there every so often or, or watch their Facebook page to see what's blooming. They've got some orchids that should be blooming here uh, in the next week or two. Yeah, right now. Because as I said, the orchids bloom pretty much like June, July, and August, or May, June, and July, depending on the weather. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> And they're small. They're and not they're big. small. Yeah, they're, they're not going to be the typical looking. Yeah. Well, then you had a pitcher plant too in there, and I love. Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, the pitcher plant. Pitcher plants, plants, plants are in the big thicket, even. But yeah. yeah. But I love the pincushion. That was so cute. Yeah. Yeah. So, but yeah, that that was really really interesting. I was surprised, and having someone do a tour for us would be really nice, so that they could actually explain it while they're going through it. So. Well, the lady did it the first time we went up there. We had. Uh, the lady took us around and yeah. kind of told us what yeah. the plants were. She knew what they were pretty well. And she didn't know everything. Yeah, and gave us the history. And uh, yeah. she's very interested. And she lives in the. It, you go through a little neighborhood to get to this. And yeah, she yeah. lives in. The, and she lives in the neighborhood. Well, and there's also a lake around it. You probably maybe some of our pictures might have shown. But uh -huh. there's a lake near it. They have part of their properties up against the lake. Oh, excellent. Um, so a couple other things Chuck had posted and he went to the iPhone conference, the Kelby One conference on iPhones in Dallas, and he posted a little video about the gear guide. And then Steve posted an article about 13 creative exercises for photographers, which I haven't looked very at, yet, but it looks very, very good. Interesting. And then Ellen posted about the Audubon photography, which that's gorgeous, gorgeous photography there. So thank you all for posting those and, and keeping our Facebook interesting to go visit occasionally. And then we have this South Dakota, Jim and Steve is handling that. Who wants to talk? Well, Steve, you're up there. Do you want to say something? Well, turn your mood off. He you're was muted. here. You're muted, Steve. Well, be muted. Uh, All right, there you go. There so you it's, it's there. been an unusually, there unusually hot and dry summer up here. Uh, but uh, every now and then we get a little rainstorm. So I mean, most of the wildflowers have already passed by, but uh, it's uh, it's 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 turning out to be a good summer, and I'm looking forward to have everybody come up. Uh, we have uh, had some inquiries with the Black Hills Photo Club. I'm a member of that as well, and we're trying to get together uh, in case we want to have like a split up of of folks uh, instead of everybody going to one one spot. Uh, we may have times where maybe some of us want to go hiking while others do not, and so I'm trying to get. 
a couple of the folks from the Black Hills Photo Club to kind of help chaperone things because they're more familiar with the area. And then we're also trying to see if we can work out and maybe have a little a social one evening, like on Tuesday or Wednesday of the week, uh, just to kind of get together and, and just do some, you know, photography sharing. No, that would be great. Yeah. yeah. And uh, South Dakota also has a uh, 1880 truck uh, train. Yep. That's also steam engine, isn't it? Yes, it is. But it's it's not as old as Big Boy. But they do have a, a rail line there that you could take a ride on. Yep. Uh, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, I think. Something like that. So, but yeah, it's, it's looking at it. I finally made my reservations and there is a lot to do. Yep. So we got I a ton have, of things. I have a question for Steve and, and for Jim. Are yeah. you actually going to have some kind of a meeting for all of us that signed up and then talk about an itinerary that we might have laid out or is it, how are we going to do this? Yes, we need to have a, a sometime uh, before you know, September or at least early September, we want to have a, a, like a Zoom meeting to, to, to really kind of nail down what everybody really wants to, to see. Uh, we've kind of thrown out more than I think we could probably do uh, for the days we're going to be here. So uh, everybody needs to kind of pick their preferences and then we'll try to you know, match people up to see what, how, we're going to, how we're going to do that. And then we're also going to try to have in uh, early September, try to do a, a Zoom meeting with both photo clubs so you can try to ask questions uh, mm -hmm. and, and talk about what we have planned uh, for uh, the event. Oh, excellent. That sounds great. Good. So should we, like for somebody like myself, I know I was in that May meeting where, you, was it May? Where you talked about going? I'm, I'm not sure which meeting it was, but yeah. is that available to on the website to go back to, to just sort of see what you guys had laid out when you were talking about the trip? Uh, I tell you what I'll do is, is uh, I'll put out a list here in the next week or so of all of the options that Steve and I have come up with, which as he, Steve said, it's more than we can do in a week. Yeah. And uh, that'll give everybody some food for thought on which ones they, you know, how they prioritize them. And I think we've, been, we've got 12 or 14 people going, so we may uh, divide up and people go to different sites on a given day. The weather's going to have a little bit to do with it, uh, but uh, don't worry. We, you won't have much idle time. <laughs> it's going to be a fun time. It is. It's going to be a busy Steve, time. Yeah. Steve, what are, the what are the chances that we'll have snow? I heard last year they had snow in the beginning of September. Oh, oh boy. Man. Maybe way up in the hills, but I, I kind of doubt where you're going to have that. It'll be that cold. Okay. <laughs> It'll be a big surprise. Yeah, it would be. So ex very, very excited. Um, I think maybe getting a map of the area out and then with the with what people want, you know, the list that you want to do, we should put that on the web somehow. Yeah. Okay. And if there's a specific subject matter that people want to do, like if it's if it's just uh, natural landscape photography or or if you want to yeah. if you want to um, do hiking or something like that that we that you want to just have a gen general kind of of concept that you want to focus on, we, we can we can do that as well. Come up now with for the, the PSA, Photographer Society Association, is actually meeting there yeah. two weeks after we're there. And the last three issues, they have been putting out information about South Dakota. And I'll see if I can um, get those particular articles and share them because they talk about the uh, downtown uh, Rapid City, they have a graffiti, not graffiti, but painted walls or whatever. Yeah, it, it's an alleyway that covers about three blocks. It, it's in the middle alley on three blocks. It's pretty cool. Yeah, and they, they talk about different things. So I'll get that out and, and see if that can also help people to give a background of what we're going to be looking at. Okay. Hey, hey guys, this is Ron. Yeah, Ron. This is Ron Fovard. Ron? Yeah, hey, Jim. Yeah. We had talked about maybe a um, a, a phone uh, phone call with uh, the rookies that would be going on. Uh, yes, you know, for those of us that aren't as, as experienced as you guys, and right now played with landscape photography and such, 
And also, do I need to contact uh, uh, the home two suites, or has that has a reservation already been made for us? No, nope, you make everybody makes their own reservation at home two suites. Okay. Do I do I reference us or anything when I call? No, we didn't have enough for a group rate, so. Okay. You just uh, Ron, Ron uh, you remind me of that meeting. I've been out of town. We we were going to do that. We'll do a Zoom meeting uh, and put a note out. Uh, uh, you know, Steve, Ron, uh, me, whoever's a canon, you want to sort of focus on canon? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And Chris, so uh, let me, let me. Uh, and and let me... courtesy, courtesy to, to you guys, uh, that first week in September, uh, right now, my grandson's scheduled to, to uh, graduate Marine boot camp. Ooh. So if you kind of just keep that in mind that, you know, Ron's not going to be thinking about a whole lot then. I'll, I, Jim, I'll send you the, those dates so that since I asked for this stuff, I'd be able, that way I'd be able to participate. Okay. Yeah. Not a problem. Sure. We can make it happen. Okay. Uh, now, yeah. one thing that I will say before we get to the uh, to our present presentation, which is next, when I did the night photography, uh, I was not able to do the post-processing. And what I'd like to know is the first uh, August 9th through the 12th is dark of the sky. Um, if there are people who are interested who would want to go to the hill country, and if the weather is good, it really depends on the weather. If it's raining, forget it. Then I could do uh, post-processing in September. If we don't have anyone interested, then I'll probably pass. But if you want to let me know if you're interested, and I would suggest if you are just to make a hotel reservation. And when I checked, there was uh, rooms available so that if it's raining and not good, we can just cancel rather than a VRBO or something that you're stuck. So this is, these are my thoughts. I was thinking- What, what are the dates again? Pardon me? What are the dates again? I'm sorry. Uh, the, the new moon is actually August 8th, but you can, you can shoot five days before or after. So it would be Monday, August 9th, through like maybe three days after that, sometime in there. And I was thinking the Enchanted Rock area. So Fredericksburg would be like 25 miles for the Enchanted Rock. Yep. So if, if, you peep, if anyone's interested and then would like to do the post-processing in September, then we could, we, we could go forward with that. So it, it just depends on um, if you guys would like to do it. So, so send me a note if you want, and then we can go from there. Okay. All right. So next is the program. So Jim, I'm gonna... I ran into Jennifer at the Turtle Bridge between uh, Kings Point and Foster's Mill, uh, and she had her two kids there, and we got to talking. And all of a sudden, I found out she was a professional photographer and she was a diver. And after I got home, I went to see if she was on Facebook and she was and we contacted and I asked her if she'd like to make a presentation and she graciously agreed to and for a little background Jennifer's been in Kingwood a long time she's a professional portrait photographer and has been for 25 years and about 15 years ago she began to dive and fell in love with diving and has continued that and she's and I don't know what this is but she's a a dive master now for the Woodlands dive shop. I assume that she does certifications, but she can tell us that. And uh, her, her uh, she'll be talking about the equipment, how she goes about do it. She started out like all of us, fairly basic when she first started photographing underwater. But as she's gained confidence and uh, has more money, she buys more equipment, and she's pretty sophisticated at this point. So Jennifer, I'm going to turn it over to you. Hey, before you before you start off, I'm going to uh, mute everybody uh, just because we're getting some more feedback. And then, if you could, Jennifer, uh, you know how to unmute yourself, right? Yeah. Yeah. So if I'm, I'm going to mute all, but then anybody who wants to speak, I'll have to unmute themselves. All right. Uh, so Jennifer, the same thing to do your presentation, you'll have to unmute. So, okay. Try to mute all, mute all. Okay. Okay. Good. 
Okay, well, hello. <clears throat> As Jim was saying, uh, I've been in Kingwood ooh, since 97 and have not really ever made photography and portraits my profession because it's, it's hard to compete and it's hard to make money, but it's always been a passion. So the people that know I do it, I still do photography for and I've done weddings and seniors and dance pictures and all that kind of thing. So when I started diving, I started out with a little Instamatic, well, not Instamatic, that was back when I started with real cameras, uh, the little cameras, uh, the, I think it was a Canon Elf was the first one, little basic underwater housing. Um, so we'll start this and we'll go into the dynamics of, uh, of starting out with underwater photography and how it differs from being up on the surface. Uh, this is a little camera that he's holding that I used actually up until early last year. It's a little Nikon, uh, doesn't require an underwater housing. It's got an internal white balance. It was a wonderful little camera that I shot tons of really good pictures, but you get, um, you're held up with how much it can do with the lighting. It's got a little built-in flash and it's worthless. <laughs> so you basically just turn it off and, and hope that uh, you, you have enough light for the picture. When you first start uh, with underwater photography, you want to make sure that your diving is on point. Um, otherwise you crash into things and stir up all of the sand on the bottom. So you need to make sure that you're a good diver before you even consider taking a camera down in your hand. Um, so that you don't run out of air and, and don't realize it. <clears throat> start with something simple. Um, like I said, that little camera he's got is, uh, is what I've used for almost a decade, actually. I've flooded five of them, uh, but <laughs> that's one of the, the things that you risk when you, you take a camera underwater. Water, uh, salt water with cameras does not mix. GoPros are very big underwater. It's uh, where a lot of people start out. They have, uh, they're waterproof up to 30 feet, so you can use them in a pool easily enough, but after you go, into some pressure, you do need a housing to uh, to take that further down. Filters um, will, let's see where my little GoPro is. The little uh, amber filters will help with uh, a lot of the, the color discolorations down there. So it's uh, really the only thing before post-processing that uh, that you have the flexibility of, of correcting with those. Even in the, the Model 9, which is what I have, it's still very limited with the color correction at, at big depths. And then there's uh, the little, I'm sure everybody's seen them on Amazon, the little LED lights that uh, I actually use them up, up here as well to do some fill light and things. There's a uh, waterproof lights that you can take down and, and restore some of the colors. But when you get serious, <laughs> you, you need to expand your, your gear. So the first thing that you need is the housing that will protect it. Um, my next venture will be to take my 5D Mark III down with me, but those housings start around $10,000. Oh. So, um, so I'm taking the baby steps uh, and and working my way up to that, getting uh, getting proficient with the strobes and things underwater first. The housing prices correlate to the type of camera. Um, so with the compact camera housing, which is what I currently use for my uh, Sony RX100 Mark VII, they're much smaller. Um, this is the one that I use, but it's a polycarbonate uh, housing. And there's quite a few different manufacturers that put those out. Uh, they're all specific to the cameras that they house because the buttons on the back line up with the buttons on your camera. Mm -hmm. Can I ask a real quick question? Sure. Yeah, uh, I know that I just went that, that iPhone conference. The new iPhones go, uh, work underwater, the brand new ones. They're waterproof. Really? Uh, how, to how deep? Uh, I do not know. I was just wondering if you ever heard of anybody using an iPhone underwater because they they actually work underwater. Uh. They do have, I have a friend who um, 
there's a, it's either a bag or some type of housing that you can take them. Uh, 30 feet is kind of where pressure really starts in. Um, I don't know if, if the iPhone, I'm, I'm a droid person, so oh, no, I don't that's have okay. the iPhone. No, the, the new, <laughs> one, the new ones me. are waterproof. That's all I know. Okay. Thank yeah, you. but I haven't, I haven't heard of that. I'm sure they have fabulous pictures under if, if there is, but, mm -hmm. uh, but just as with photographer, photographers, the bigger your camera, the, the more serious you're taking. <laughs> I was going to um, remind, remind everybody too, if you want to speak, uh, use your space bar. Okay. Okay. Yeah, certainly. And stop me along the way because it, uh, you forget things and, and it's, uh, it's easier for me to answer questions along the way than it is to come back and remember my train of thought. So feel free. So how water affects light. Uh, this is the biggest difference when you take your camera down. Um, just like on land, the best looking photographs and videos have two things in common, great composition and fantastic lighting. Uh, it can be hard to take great underwater photos or video because water does some very strange things to the strength and color of light. Almost all images taken underwater were captured, um, all of these were captured using one or more strobe units or video lights uh, to not only bring in more light, but to help us see the true colors. And even if you're not taking pictures underwater, I always take uh, an underwater flashlight with me to bring back the colors because you definitely don't see near the, the vibrance of the colors once you get to a certain level. And, and we'll get to the, the light and color fall offs here in a minute. Um, water is approximately 800 times denser than air. It means that when the sunlight hits the water directly, it loses 50% of its brightness in the first 3.3 feet of water. This loss is caused by three factors, reflection, diffusion, and refraction. So the first being the reflection. Um, it's easy for us to observe. We've all have to wear sunglasses to turn away from the glare of the sun on the surface of the water. The glare is caused by the light bouncing off the top of the water and uh, the lower the sun is in the sky, the more the light is reflected away. This is why wide angle shots, especially if open water will be part of the images, should be taken during the middle of a sunny day, which is exactly what we avoid as photographers up on land. Okay, refraction is the next thing. Um, you all put the pencil in the water and see how it bends and things. It's a fun little trick with the kids, uh, but why everything appears bigger and closer underwater is due to refraction. As light travels from air into water, which is much more dense, the speed and direction of light changes, causes some light to be lost, as well as the magnification we see when we look through a mask, the scuba mask. The light changes its speed and direction and it passes from water through the mask lens and air voids in front of your eyes. This refraction causes, so uh, this refraction causes some objects to appear closer or about 30% larger. So when you see the shark underwater, that's this big, he's probably a few feet smaller. <laughs> and this is where the, uh, the color starts falling off. And uh, the, in the first 15 feet, you still have good color. So you're going to achieve the best pictures within the first 15 feet of water. After that, you lose your red, which is why most of the, um, the filters that you will see are amber. It's restoring that color, which most recreational people are going to stay within. But after you start uh, sinking down 60, 90, 100 and, and greater, you lose your pretty much your entire spectrum. The distinct colors in the visible spectrum are the result of the different wavelengths of light energy. Red is the one at the end. Uh, so the, the bigger the wavelength, uh, the slower it's gonna travel through the water, basically. Once the camera, uh, once the color is absorbed, it cannot be seen without using the artificial light source like a video light or camera strobe. Red disappears around uh, the 15 feet, so. Definitely need some, some extra light after you start going down. Which is where the strobes 
come in for underwater. Most of them um, are going to be the rechargeable batteries, just like we use up here. Uh, some of my, my video lights actually have an internal um, charge, so they don't have replaceable batteries, but the other ones I just use the envelopes um, for, for my strobes. Strobes and video lights are essential to bring out color and brighten up underwater subjects and scenes. Uh, with strobes that flash, the flash of light helps to stop action and make subjects look sharp. Video lights cannot stop action, but they can light up darker areas so they can be recorded at their full potential. And a lot of times a video light is used for a focusing light too, because your strobe isn't going to help you focus, so. Okay, so the same uh, picture that you could take at three feet underwater, you can get a good image of something that's 16 feet away uh, with the same color without the fall off. Once you get down to 16 feet, you have to be within three feet of that object to get the same quality of the image. So uh, the deeper you go, the closer you have to get to get the same quality of the image. Uh, let's see, I've got the thing on the top that's kind of blocking the words up there. <laughs> this is gonna also prevent light. Uh, if I could turn the screen a little, oh, no, I didn't. And I don't know how to go back, let's see. Oh, there we go. Um, let's see, remember that the light has to travel from the source to the image and back to the camera. So that the wavelengths of light, the further down you go, they're being absorbed. That's why you have to get closer to the image to get the same quality. And here we see an image that's taken far away. The light is diffused or reduced by clouds, haze, uh, Let's see if I can move this bar at the top. Oh, there we go. Um, clouds, haze, or fog before it reaches the water. After it enters the water, it is further diffused by the particulate, like plankton, uh, detritus, and sand. So this right here was sand. Uh, there was a picture that we were taking, and everybody was down there posing with the saxophone. So everybody was fin kicking, and it stirred up a ton of sand. Um, shooting images. Uh, clear water is better for shooting images because it appears brighter due to the lower amount of diffusion. So just like snow in front of your car lights that you put on the high beams and you see that snow much worse, same thing in the water. If you've got a direct light source going through all this particulate, it's just going to bounce it back and reflect it. Underwater point and shoot camera systems usually make use of fiber optic cables, which is the one that I have. So with my little um, Sony RX, you pop up the little flash and it's going to trigger the lights through a fiber optic cable. So that's how the little point and shoots work. Um, that's, this is my setup right here. And you can see the little cables that go down the arms up to the flash. Uh, they're, they're connected and will trigger off of the internal camera flash, which is one of the, uh, the, the bad points about point and shoot cameras. It's going to suck your battery because of that internal flash that's going off. So definitely the, uh, the bigger cameras like with the, the 5D um, is going to retain much more battery powder, power underwater. Uh, when the flash goes off, the sensor detects the burst. Uh, just like it does up here with, uh, with our sync cords and does. Um, like I was saying with the flashlights, if you use a continuous light, uh, those are very good at night dives because it's, um, you're lighting up the whole scene, you're getting the true color. And most of the time with a night dive, when there's no other light or, or diffusion, um, it's going to, to give you enough light for a, a good exposure. When a camera is correcting for color underwater, it usually adds red to the scene. So this is going to be an uncorrected picture of this turtle. Um, this was about 30 feet of water. So you've definitely got the red is all gone out of that picture. Um, this is a color corrected picture with, um, with flash. So it's going to restore all of those colors. You can do the same thing in, uh, in Lightroom and stuff, but it, you want to add to your, your post-production and go through thousands of pictures, 
you can do that, but it's not going to fill in um, the, the shadows and, and give you the true color right, right out of the camera. Now this picture uh, was on that little Nikon point and shoot that I had white balanced for depth and come up to the surface. So this is how much red it's actually adding back into an image to recreate the, uh, the actual colors under, under the water when you're not using a flash. And that is uh, the case with the GoPro is, is gonna have that amber filter to restore the red that you lose at, at depth too. So when you are using the, uh, the big cameras or even the ones with the internal white balance and you're not shooting with flash, you can white balance just like we do up here with, with strobes and things. You white balance at depth um, with those cards. And what I use, uh, my dive gloves have a white palm and I just shoot off with my glove. So it recreates it. You can also shoot off the sand, um, which is, is usually pretty white or gray. Okay, with the strobe placement, um, there's six easy tips and then we'll go into them a little bit further in a minute. Uh, always keep your strobes pointed forward, not inward. And that's going to be um, for the, the sand and the reflection. As you get closer to the subject, you can bring the strobes closer to the housing, which this one uh, was from another picture it's shown here. Let's see. As you get further away, you have to push them out wider, which is this picture here. So he is taking a picture of this coral. It's a wide angle picture. You have to really spread them out and have uh, some, some powerful strobes to, to encompass the wide angle. If you see a backscatter while you're reviewing your image, push the strobes out even wider for your next shot. And then that will probably help with the backscatter. If one strobe is significantly closer to the other, uh, turn down the intensity of the closer strobe to avoid blowouts. Um, and, and a lot of times with pictures up here, we like the, um, the Rembrandt lighting and things. A lot of times under the water, you don't want to have one strobe that is uh, more powerful or that shows a shadow. Shadows are not very pleasing with underwater photography. Hey Jennifer, quick question. Mm -hmm. uh, you're making all these adjustments underwater. I mean, how difficult is it? I've, I've never worked with uh, one of these housings uh, for underwater oh. photography. So how difficult is it to make the adjustments you've just been talking about? A lot of it, just as with up here, is trial and error. So there's a lot of settings on these strobes for power, um, the intensity of it you kind of find your setting based on the type of photography you're doing. So if you're doing macro, you're not gonna need as much light. You, through a lot of errors, uh, find that setting number one is the best for macro when you're within a foot of it and you pull it back. It's, there's no real um, set in stone way, but it, it is very difficult and you do have to have perfect buoyancy, especially when um, like I was shooting a moray eel and I didn't want to stir up the sand and he was right there. I didn't want to scare him and the bubbles scare him. And then you've got all these, you know, the current is blowing you and you don't want to touch the coral. And it's the dynamics and the pressure and the stress of getting the shot are so rare. And, uh, and that's part of the, the challenge of it is bringing all those things together and, and getting that perfect shot. And then and then you're proud of it because <laughs> there is a lot more than just having a model, you know, smiling and okay, three, two, one. It's uh, it's a lot more dynamics down there. <laughs> Jennifer, how mm -hmm. deep are how deep are you diving? I go recreational, so I don't go any deeper than 130 feet. Um, most of the diving that I do is within 70 to 100. Is, is where I go. So the color is non-existent and, and how, it's a necessity. Yeah, and how long do you stay down? Usually I can stay down and, and my breathing is um, has gotten better and I run every day so that I can perfect my, my oxygen consumption, but I stay down for about an hour. That is a long time. Yeah, and it, and it can get cold. And the further down you are, mm -hmm. the 
less time you have because your air is compressed. And so one breath at 100 feet is probably equal to, you know, 10 or 15 breaths at 30 feet. And then so it's, how, long, uh, how long does it take you to go up? Because don't you have to worry about the, the nitric oxide or whatever that you're absorbing while you're down? Yes, you do need to go up slow. They say um, a foot every 30 seconds is, you know, you go very nice and slow going up. You can get, uh, if you're not breathing enriched air, you can get overloaded with nitrogen, which is um, called going into deco. So in that case, you do have to stop for five minutes and off gas the nitrogen and things like that. Uh, but with regular no deco diving, you just stop at 15 feet, wait for three minutes, and then you're good to go on up. Mm, okay, thank you. Yeah, but that's why learning and being very comfortable with diving and knowing what your computer is telling you if you've got alarms going off, you can't be holding this big rig and looking at your air and looking at your depth and worrying about all those things unless you're a very proficient diver. So with the lighting um, aspects, the, uh, for the lights to do their job underwater, you have to get close to the subject basically is uh, so you avoid all that backscatter that we were talking about and like was, was shown in the image before. Um, if there is a lot of particulate in the water, which happens many times after a storm, or if there's a strong current, you're gonna get a whole lot more of that. So it's not just from people kicking up the sand on the bottom. Um, I've been in some dives where the visibility is 150 feet, and I've been on some dives where it's about five feet. So um, it's not even worth shooting if your visibility isn't gonna be good. Getting close to the subject uh, not only needs more light, but also can help avoid backscatter, which is when the particulates in the water, um, what we talked about. So the positioning there is going to be at 90s um, if you stretch them out. So it's not, if you were you to use the flash right above the camera, just as it's unpleasing up here, you, you basically can't do it. You're gonna get all the reflection from the camera if it's right above the lens. So you wanna avoid that at all possible. Uh, with underwater macro photography, which this is not, he's shooting wide angle here, but with macro photography and video, the closer you get to the subject, the more you can turn the lights inward and possibly bring them forward to be sure they light up the subject completely. Uh, note that the light should never be pointed directly at subjects unless the strobe is placed very close to the creature. Uh, that's just being respectful of, of you know, turtles, so you don't blind their eyes. I'm sure they get the little purple things in their eyes too. <laughs> uh, once the position of the strobes, uh, and this is what we were kind of talking about earlier with the dynamics of it, uh, once the position of the strobes or the video lights is lighting up the subject as you want it to, uh, with no backscatter, then adjusting the strength of the lights uh, is the next step to, to getting the proper exposure. So you can certainly blow out things uh, with your lights if, if they're too powerful, you just tone them down. Um, don't have a whole lot of opportunities to move yourself back or forward. Um, sometimes you can go forward, but you don't want to move back because of that backscatter. Jennifer, I had a question. Where do you do most of your diving at location-wise? Um, I just got back from Curacao about uh, four days ago. Um, I do like Kuvi, the Bahamas. It's wonderful, but the bulk of my diving is right here off of the, um, in the Gulf at uh, the Flower Gardens. Marine National Sanctuary. And that's where I lead trips out. Um, we go out, in fact, I've got one coming up at the end of this month. The, uh, the coral reefs and the life out there just out of Freeport, um, well, it's about 150 miles. It's just not right out of Freeport, but it's, uh, it's incredible. It's the same as, uh, we, we call it the Texas Caribbean out there. So it's, um, you go on a liveaboard boat and stay the weekend and, uh, you only get in like seven dives, which is the, the limiting factor there, but it's a good weekend. No flight involved. <laughs> so the other aspect, if you don't like shooting coral or, um, or fish is underwater portrait photography, which I 
started seeing pictures and I thought, well, I've done some modeling. I want to try that. So on my uh, recent trip to Turks and Caicos on an aggressor liveaboard for a week, I decided to take some, uh, some gowns and things. And it just so happened that the captain of the ship was a professional photographer. So talked to him about doing one of these underwater shoots. I've never done one underneath the water before. Um, so it was an adventure. I wrote a whole article about it. This is the the captain and my friend, the dive buddy that I went with. She also wanted to try it. So before the shoot, the things that are key for underwater modeling photography is to, of course, you have to discuss the hand signals that you're going to use, uh, plan the posing and positioning before you go down, practice in a pool if you can. Um, I did not. I just decided I was a good swimmer and a good diver and uh, I don't free dive. I don't hold my breath. That's why I like to scuba. Uh, but I, I figured I could do it okay. <laughs> a safety diver, if you are in any more than standing water, is totally a requirement. Uh, the dynamics of, of this art are incredible and very difficult. And then have all the, as a photographer, have all your settings ready to shoot and to, excuse me, and to shoot fast. Uh, <laughs> this is one of the outtakes. Um, the unique dynamics of modeling. Uh, you can't see clearly. So if you're not going to wear a mask, um, you can't see more than a few feet in front of you. Uh, you've got to hold your breath. So you have to be very comfortable doing that. Uh, you have got to hold a pose until you see the strobes fire. So you don't know how long it's going to take him to make that picture. And you got to just hold it until you see it go off and then change your pose or, or what. Uh, hair and clothing is completely different underwater. It does whatever the water does. And every movement that your body makes exacerbates all of the, the flow of the hair. Many of the pictures, the hair is in your face. Um, the, the clothing gets tangled around your feet. It's, it's extreme. Uh, hyperthermia is a big thing. So the water temperature was about uh, 78 degrees um, and I was freezing, very, very cold. Uh, you need to either surface or have air fed to you if you're deep. Um, the, the shoot that I did, the safety diver, when I would motion that I was out of air, he would come and, and give me um, some air out of his regulator. So it was very stressful. And then you need weights to sink. Um, you're going to naturally float up to the top. So unless you're pushing off from the surface going down and you're constantly moving, which makes the photography difficult, you need some amount of weight to keep you in the water table where, uh, where you wanna be. And you need frequent breaks. It's uh, it's very hard and stressful. At least it was for me. I I, I thought I was drowning on many occasions. <laughs> uh, so you have to be a good swimmer and and definitely comfortable in the water. With uh, a large part of this is going to be post production. This was the original image. Um, the outfit did not work out. So going in and throwing in some some extra scarves and things. A lot of the pictures that you see underwater are going to be um, composited and, and touched up. Um, the, the bubbles are a big issue. So when you're breathing out, if you've got bubbles in your nose or you're breathing, you're gonna see those bubbles in the picture, which a lot of times are edited out. Uh, the flash color versus the background. So you can see where his strobes were lighting up the skin color, which brought that back. But in the next picture, um, the background is still going to be blue. So you're going to get your strobe color correction, but you're not going to have it fix everything. And then, um, so post-production, you can fix the hair in the wardrobe issues and add light rays, which um, this one, they, there were a few in there because he put the sun right behind my head. Uh, but you can, a lot of them have those, those added in as well. You can see the, the hair issue here again, and, uh, and the, what I was talking about with the background color. This is what your camera would see without the, um, any light or color correction in. 
and then this would be the color corrected to the strobe. So you get you get the a different feeling, but you're not going to get both unless you post correct your background separately from from your model that's lit up with the strobe. And if you want to read more about the entire ordeal, uh, I also write articles for Dive Newswire, which is an online dive publication, and uh, that's the link to uh, to the articles that I've written. But it includes the uh, the underwater modeling ordeal. <laughs> it was it was quite uh, quite exciting and and humbling. <laughs> And with that concludes things. Are there uh, any questions? Yeah, feel free to unmute yourself. Jennifer, I, I'd kind of like to go snorkeling. Uh, do you have any comments on snorkeling and doing this? Snorkeling is a lot easier. Um, GoPro, because you can snag pictures off of GoPros, they are going to give you very good color. Uh, you're not going to have the light fall off, especially if you're going with a bright sunny day. You're going to get uh, very little light diffusion when you're just snorkeling. But you can definitely, when there's a reef that is shallow, you can get some amazing pictures um, just from snorkeling. Mm -hmm. uh, Jennifer, I know we what also did a manta ray dive that was uh, pretty amazing. They just take the lights out and put them on a, um, a rack. And then you all hung on the raft, and the manta rays would come up literally within inches of you. Oh, uh, was that in Kona? Uh, yeah, that was in Hawaii, in uh, on the Big Island. Yeah, that's that's a famous dive. Um, it's I have not done that one. It's uh, but it would be exciting, definitely. They've they've trained them to uh, to be at a certain place at a certain time, and and they know that. That the food will be there with the lights. <laughs> yeah, my daughter thought they were going to eat her. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jennifer, very, very very question. Jennifer, have you done just that one modeling dive? Uh, and do you I, want to do any more of them? No, 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 no. Uh, I should have started off small. I, I tend to go all in when I go into things um, and just figured I could do it. It was definitely way more difficult than I thought. Um, and in fact, I got an eye infection. Something, when my eyes were open during the session, decided to take residence in my eyeball. And uh, I had uh, quite the infection for a couple weeks after that. So mm. the dynamic, at least this in the ocean, is definitely, um, there's a lot to it. I was about 15 feet deep. So the fear of... I can't get to the surface. I couldn't see where my safety diver was. And I would put up the out of air sign and he would, he was good getting over to me and things, but it was uh, very stressful. So a lot of the pictures that you see and the shoots that are done with underwater modeling are done in pools mm -hmm. with where they either composite the backgrounds or they do have a lot of springs in Florida where a lot of these are done as well. So you don't have, you know, the salinity of the water that. You would think it would burn your eyes a lot, but after a few seconds, it really didn't burn my eyes. But uh, doing it in the ocean at depth is definitely not where you want to begin doing something like this. <laughs> uh, Jennifer, what about what about sharks? Love sharks. They're my favorite. <laughs> in fact, um, I'm sorry, I can't. It's Shark Week. <laughs> Shark Week just, just ended. Sharks are uh, definitely my favorite underwater creature. And you don't really know if you're going to be afraid of them until you're faced with it. And I didn't know how I would react until the first time that I encountered one on a dive. And instead of being afraid or swimming away, I was chasing him. And I was like, oh, come back, come back, which is not what you want to do. But you actually scare them when you chase them. So uh, there's definitely different types of sharks, but most of them are curious. And if you're not moving around a whole lot, they, they may come up and kind of check you out. But most of the time, if you start chasing them, they're gone. <laughs> mm. well, that sounds like fun, but uh, probably beyond me. <laughs> <laughs> all I know is that all those shows you see where they have the people in the cage and the sharks are coming after them is like, no. <laughs> <laughs> I think sharks have gotten a bad rap. Yes. Yes, Jennifer, how about barracuda? Have you ever had any experience with them? Mm -hmm. 
the flower gardens has a ton of barracuda and I've never had an issue with them. Um, during my safety stop at 15 feet where you have to just hang out for, uh, for five minutes or three, three to five minutes, they have gotten so close to me and they are, or at least they look, uh, you know, with the, the distortion of the size, but they look very big and mean. And there was someone that came up to me not, not very long ago, probably last year. And I just kind of held on to my mask because I have heard that they'll charge your mask or anything shiny, you know, they'll, they will charge you. And I kind of just held on to my mask so he didn't hit my face. And I was, I was a little nervous, I'm more nervous of a barracuda than a shark by far. Mm -hmm. uh, Jennifer, how long, when you're down there shooting, um, for every good photo that you get, how many bad photos are you throwing away? <laughs> Definitely uh, your model. If you're shooting coral or something that is staying still, you've got a much better chance. But with the fish and they're swimming around, you get their tail, they, you know, it's, they hide behind some coral. The good images, and I'm getting more particular and I'm getting better, but uh, definitely only maybe get six or seven winners out of, uh, out of a whole dive. And that's if you're lucky. And what is your shutter speed? Because if they're moving around, you've gotta be pretty quick and in order to get them sharp and with the flash. Mm -hmm. And it depends on how fast they're moving. I mean, if they're just like the more eight eels, they kind of just play, but the little clownfish, they're, they're all over the place. So yeah. the strobe definitely, um, 250 shutter speed is as fast as you really need to. 125 will usually get most of it, uh, but with the strobe, it's, it's gonna capture that. So. Mm, okay, excellent. And you don't oh, have just... the sync issues with these little cameras uh, that you have with syncing your strobes like on the, the Canon, uh, where it's a limit of 250. With these, you can actually shoot one ten thousandth of a second and, and still capture without any, any uh, shutter curtain. What camera was that? The one that I use uh, right now, and, and my goal is to eventually get uh, my 5D Mark III underwater, but I use the, the Sony RX100 Mark VII, mm -hmm. which it's, it's a great, uh, they use it for blogging a lot up here too, but it's, uh, it's a nice little Zeiss lens and um, it, it's a great camera, but it doesn't look like much, but uh, it, it takes some, some really great pictures. Mm, okay. Yeah, I was just gonna say, Jennifer, I, I actually took diving classes when I was in college in Santa Barbara in the late 70s and they had underwater photography offered and we were diving in half inch full body wetsuits because that water on the Pacific coast is pretty, pretty cold. But, uh, but I do have good memories of seeing all kinds of wildlife. It's incredible what you see when you're underwater, whether it's a, a little sponge or a a worm or something or a, or, or a shark or something. It's, it's a beautiful mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. yeah, and I've got a ton of, if, if you want to see some of the, the images, uh, my Facebook page, I have public, um, public access to all the dive stuff because I have so many followers um, with the dive industry. So all of those are public if anybody wants to check those out. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, you can go on the same location dive the same exact dive and never see the same thing twice. It's, yeah. It is incredible. Well, you mentioned sharks. And the only time I ever, we used to see blue sharks on the Pacific coast a lot. The only time we ever had a bad experience was one of our divers on a, on a group dive decided to clean the fish that Ooh. he had caught while we were still in the water. <laughs> and yeah. We got back to the boat and it was like, we, we yes. could only get out so fast <laughs> oh my yeah God. and i i do hear that um there's a lot of spear fishermen yeah. that go out to these places and it the sharks have learned that when they hear that that ching uh yeah. that's a dinner bell yeah and they will come and they'll fight you for your fish so that is not something i want to do um, i'm going to shoot <laughs> the camera not the spear gun <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay um, are there any other questions for Jennifer? Uh, I had one for Jennifer. I just out of curiosity, have you seen 
a lot of, of dying coral or do you see the coral reefs uh, surviving better than expected or just kind of what's your experience? In Curacao, which is right by Bonaire, and Bonaire is uh, part of the ABC Islands down in, in the Southwest um, Caribbean, it's known as the diver's paradise. And there was one site in Curacao that I dove where I was taken back at the health of mm -hmm. the coral. And you don't normally hear about how healthy some of these coral reefs are. All you hear is the bad stuff, just like with most of the news. So all the dying coral and the bleaching and all these things, which is happening. And uh, Utila, it's definitely falling off. Um, there are some places where it's barren, but there are plenty of places where it is still thriving and exceptionally healthy. Oh, oh that's interesting, thank you. Mm. Okay. All right, um, Jennifer, this was an excellent, excellent talk. I think you've opened up the uh, another field for some of us, although I don't, in Saudi Arabia, I did diving and I'm not a water person, so I don't think I would venture, I don't even scuba dive, but Mike does. So uh, we'll take a lot of this information and, and utilize it. And I really appreciate the fact that uh, Jim found you and on the yeah. Turtle Bridge and talk to you. So kudos to Jim for actually bringing it up and getting you to become a speaker. So excellent yes, talk, uh, new information for all of us. Yeah, and I'll, I'll second that. You did a great job. I, it's, I didn't know anything about underwater photography and it was, it was fascinating for me to hear from you. Mm -hmm. A video, Bill Baird put this together for 4th of July, and I realized 4th of July is gone, but I thought for intermission, I would put it on, and hopefully you're going to be able to hear. I can hear. Hey, Kathy. <laughs>
Uh, so this is the share and learn. And obviously we, this has been very successful. Thank you, Chuck, for putting this up, the Dropbox on our, on our website. That really is a, a nice thing to, to have everyone go in there and I don't have to work, worry about them coming to my emails. So. Well, just uh, the, the other reminders that that little same button is on our Monday morning email that goes out. Okay. So if, oh, you're, okay. if you're looking for that button and you don't know, want to sign into the website, just wait mm -hmm. for the Monday morning email and use that one. Oh, okay. okay. Excellent. So we did not have a lot of submissions. I really and truly thought that um, shadows would be easy, like clouds. I mean, gorgeous clouds. I thought, oh, it's shadows. So, but maybe it's summer and people are just busy doing things. So without any more further thing, I'll turn it over to Bill. And is this you, Bill? A picture? Is that a selfie? I don't know if he's back. <laughs> is he back? Yeah, he's there. He's, 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 he's muted. He's, he's, muted. he's got, he's muted. Oh, Bill, unmute. Space bar. <laughs> That looks like Pee Wee Herman. Yeah, it does. It looks <laughs> there he goes. Now he goes. Okay, now there, there, yeah. there okay. you go. As I say, I was uh, being arrested there and uh, thought I was going to have to serve prison time, but uh, fortunately they let me off. But you can see I was uh, cooperating fully with the authorities. <laughs> so who took the photo? Your hands are in your in the in the sky. <laughs> I guess Rosemary took that. Oh, uh, okay. It wasn't the arresting cop, huh? Yeah, no. <laughs> now, is this Rosemary? Well, that's Rosemary. That We were in New Mexico, Santa Fe, and she was standing next to an adobe wall, and the quality of the light in New Mexico is just, uh, you know, really fantastic. And uh, she wasn't particularly posing, but I just happened to see that picture. And uh, mm -hmm. so I had that printed. Really it was sweet. on our uh, dresser for a long time until Harvey. Mm -hmm. uh, and then picture. this is cool. This is a shadows of the of the of the uh, veins okay. that's uh, in front of the uh, wash repair place and the Kingwood. Uh, what's the name of that? Uh, those fellows in there. Anyway, uh, <clears throat> that was uh, one that I happened on. That's neat. That's it, a nice picture. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I love how you find shots around Kingwood. You always find something to take. I love that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, <laughs> You had one a long time ago of a shopping cart with with uh, shadows. I remembered that. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah. So, but excellent. Okay, Chuck. Uh, this was on a trip, uh, uh, actually, with the Emersons again in the uh, Navajo country. Uh, this is Monument Valley, and that was uh, that was one evening. I guess we were yeah we went out one evening and we were like just caught, caught the sun peeking around the sun. I think that's a sunrise. That's a sunrise. Mm -hmm. A sunrise. sunrise. That's, that's, it was yeah, sunrise. Yeah, yeah. That was sunrise. That's correct. Yeah. Very nice. That's cool. Yep. Yeah. Beautiful. Okay, that's cool. the top of uh, Saint Peter's in uh, Rome, uh, and it's uh it's just uh I like the the shadows and the light and uh, you know just play on 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 uh, on that. It's a dark and light. St. Peter's, not the typical shot. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Yeah. It's pretty. And then Esperson, that is a really cool building. Yeah, the Esperson, Esperson. building. Hard to get a picture of that building because it's downtown on the corner, around, surrounded by all other uh, uh, pictures, uh, all other buildings. But this one uh, is, again, it's a play with the light and the dark. Uh, it's processed, obviously. I mean, it's, it's darkened and then uh, the, the light is put on using the radio filter in Lightroom. Uh, mm -hmm. So you use the radio filter to, to put light on the building uh, where you See, want. I was at the Penzl building, which is right next door to this building. Yeah. And on the 19th floor, you could actually, you were at level with the, oh. with the folly at the top. And I never brought my camera down there to take a picture of it. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. yeah. Huh. My wife used to work in the Penzl building. I should have done that. Yeah. She did. Yeah. yeah. Which, which uh, tower? Was she in the north or the south tower? No, there's the, uh, she was in... Uh, let me, I can't remember exactly. She, uh, oh God, I, I can't remember. That's so many years ago. She worked for the, a company called United Gas. Yeah. Okay. She might have been in the North Tower. Well, that was mostly Pennzoil. Probably in the South Tower she was yeah. in. So, but yeah, it, 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 it's a neat building. Yeah, yeah. Um, Chris. Hi. Yeah, we, we were in Australia driving down a country road and uh, we're doing a wine tour because you do that in Australia. 
And we went into this place and it was about a hundred degrees outside. And the lady said, well, we did a wine tasting. She says, Hey, you want to go down to the wine cellar and, and see what's around. So we went in the wine cellar and took, <laughs> it was really cool. It was uh, very, very, <laughs> and very cold, kind of cool underground, but it was just fun. And I just thought, I love the shadows. There were some skylights of old like uh, rafters and things above. So it was kind of a fun shot. Yeah, it is nice. cool. Ooh. This was in, in also in Australia. We were I was walking around Brisbane and this was over a doorway and it was a, one of those typical European British style, you know, buildings from the colonial period, I guess. And and I don't know what this building was, but it had this rather grotesque uh, sculpture over the door. Maybe it was the health ministry or something. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the mortuary. Scary, but scary anyway, enough, so I, uh, I got a, I got a grabbed a quick shot of it. <laughs> yeah, scary enough, evil vibes or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> this is cool. Uh, yeah, this was a place in, it's down in St. Augustine, Florida. My, my, you know, as usual, my wife had a project with a company there and I went along and we went to dinner at this restaurant that actually was, it's called the Ice House. And it was originally an old ice house where they made ice to be brought to your house and put in your ice box, a big block of ice. And one of the things was they had all these old ice tools that they, ice tongs, I guess they call them. And, and the light was coming in when we dined there. And I just said, oh, I've got to go get a picture of that. Yeah, that is cool. Yeah. That shadows are awesome yeah it was just and when that when when the theme came up i was thinking hmm shadows oh i like that shot <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's amazing how you when you get a theme subject it's like wow i remember that so excellent uh emily is not here she is i think in seattle so she sent me information about the shots and this is a photo i love of my son when he was little standing at the top of a slide in the park so he's in shadow and you've got the rim of the rim sun lighting. on him. Very That's nice. Mm -hmm. Very good. And this is the interesting shadows created by a solar eclipse shining through the trees. This is a 2017 solar eclipse. Mm -hmm. and, and when we were taking pictures, I didn't really, you noticed it. I mean, it was really, really weird when, when it was total solar eclipse. It's just, it, it's like, I don't know. You have to exact and two more years. I think there's this total solar eclipse that will be coming through Texas. So we have to talk about that eventually. Okay. So, and then this one's not shadows, but it's a shot of the Mamatus clouds. I guess that's where the clouds are. And so there are a few shadows in here, but it was more the clouds. Uh, Frank, this is our new member. If you want to talk about your photos. Yeah, and all, uh, all three of these photos were taken um, on the Hudson River, just overlooking Manhattan. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, there was just a, a big storm coming through and uh, low black clouds that just kind of, you know, just filled the, filled the frame, everything we need to do. And that's the Empire State Building, obviously, straight in front of us. Mm -hmm. the, uh, that's um, really cool. The building a little bit to the left of that. And then uh, Times Square, where you see the blue, the blue part there. It was just a, a fluke and a big storm coming through and caught it just the right time. Now, was this from the New Jersey side? Yes. Yeah, okay. this is directly opposite, um, about 24th Street or something like that. Yeah. Okay. Neat. Yeah. And this is uh, similar on uh, this is the Freedom Tower. So down uh, uh, the, the tower that replaced the, uh, the World Trade Center. Mm -hmm. um, and again, just showing at the end of the day the way, uh, the, way the shadows are, are playing on it. And uh, you know, lighting up some of the buildings, not all the buildings. Nice. And then this, uh, we, we uh, my wife and I thought that we invented the term "golden hour" until I saw your request for submissions. So we didn't know that was a, <laughs> a common term. But uh, you know, just uh, within the hour before uh, before sunset every day, it really lights up. And I've, I've actually couldn't find the the best ones I had, but mm -hmm. uh, it really everything really turns golden um, and just it just lights up and it's magical for about uh, you know ten minutes or so just before. The sun goes down below the horizon. Did you ever photograph from Dumbo, which is on the Brooklyn no. side? That's you no. see a lot of photographs because they have the pilings that are still visible. So you get a lot of photographers that do it would be the sunset would be behind the city instead of in front of right. it. So and I've got some I've got some others um, that show the sunrise um, mm -hmm. where it's where uh, depending on the time of the year, it's mm -hmm. just to the left of the frame or just just at the left side of the frame. 
yeah. and I just uh, you know just a just a ton of pictures there with everything is black and just the, the sun starting to peak up uh, yeah. about half an hour after official sunrise. New York is a fun place to photograph. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Very nice. Oh, thank photo. you. Uh, Jeremy, is Jeremy here? Do you see him? I I'm just looking through here. I, I don't see him right now. How about Okay. I haven't heard him at all. No, no, I, so, I have. I don't see him. No. All right. So this is the shadows. I mean, he he always does wonderful photography too. Oh, Look that's a that's a great oh, one. Wow. Isn't, yeah, isn't that, that great? Nice. That's beautiful. Wow. And I don't know where that was taken. Um, I'll have to see if I can get information on these. And then this one is maybe Big Bend. I don't know. And then Pam. Ms. She, Pam? She, she's she's in. muted. We'll figure it out. Space bar. Space bar. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. OK. Uh -huh. Excellent. Now, this doesn't have any shadows in it, but I just wanted to share this because we were just in Yellowstone and this is the um, lower falls. And if you're there between that 10 minute period in the morning, you do get to see the rainbow. Oh, really cool. That's, that's yeah, because you've got you got some sh the shadow on the side of the waterfall. Oh, yeah. OK, yeah. OK, yeah. give me credit for that then. <laughs> <laughs> and this and, is cool. This is uh, Grand Geyser, and this was uh, a mistake. You wanted shadows, but see, I did get the people in the front there, but the other shots I took after that, I took the shadows out, so you just get the geyser, but, and we had Chuck skies the whole time. Beautiful, yeah. beautiful clouds. <laughs> and so I, went, I figured I'd share that with you. There were three little kids next to us that were watching this, and they were having a blast. They thought that was the neatest thing in the whole wide world. Oh, uh, that, that is cool. cool. That is fun. Scott, is Scott here? Wow. Is that Scott? Yeah, Scott Meyer. <laughs> oh, is that Scott? <laughs> no. I was when you said Scott, I thought, well, oh, he's changed. No. Uh, uh, I don't see. Uh, I don't see. Okay, I, don't see I think this is uh, his granddaughter, I think, or daughter. I'm not sure, but anyway. I think it'd be a granddaughter. Yeah, and I think she does uh, gymnastics. Yeah. But isn't that cool? Look at the shadow. It looks like a bird. Oh, that is cool. Yeah. That does show. Yeah. Um, and then this is the palm tree somewhere. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. That, that's a nice yeah, addition. Mm -hmm. You do a lot of uh, foreground is all the shadows leading you to the, mm -hmm. to the water. And then this looks like one that we took oh. in Yellowstone. It doesn't? Uh, it? I wish I'd yeah. remembered. Yeah, I actually, I remembered that. I was going to put it in, but then I put in other things. But yeah, I thought, well, for sure Chuck would do that. <laughs> no, I remember us standing there doing that. You know. Yeah. So, and then Steve. Yeah, I, I will tell you that this particular um, share and learn, it was a challenge to even think about shadows for me. I just, I must have went through several thousand pictures just trying to find a couple that you know had you know the thought of shadows. Mm -hmm. uh, so anyway, this was in uh, uh, South Dakota here, here in Rapid City on Skyline Drive. Uh, we had a, had a storm coming through, and the way the the shadowing uh, at sunset hit the mountain ranges there, it, it was it was pretty neat. That kind of uh, it was nice. There's you left. I mean, leaving the haze and not using the haze filters. I mean, it gives a lot of depth to the picture. Yep. And then the layer, the layers are fantastic. I mean, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, yeah. seven, eight layers or something in there. Yeah. yeah. This is this is kind of like uh, Jeremy's, but this is a black and white. Yeah. It's, it's really it's cool. I love it. And love you that. are right, Steve. You you don't really think about shadows until you have something and you start looking for them. Yep. So. Yeah. And this. Okay, so this is in uh, Zion National Park. Uh, we we took a, a trip, uh, a hike through the Narrows, and if you've never done it, it it's fabulous. You're, you're basically walking through uh, water that's you know call it you know one to two feet deep the whole way almost, uh, and doing a hike and, and you're just walking through these slot canyons, and uh, the shadows on them were, were pretty cool. Where was that at? In Zion National Park in Utah. Mm, okay. Oh, Zion. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, yeah we did okay. Zion National Park. Uh, so we did uh, Angels Landing, did the hike up there 
on the first Ooh. day, Ooh. over 100 Ooh. degrees <laughs> by the diet. Yeah. Uh, and then we did this second, and, and this was this was fabulous. Nice, cool uh, hike. Uh, it was an up and back hike of, you know, mile and a half, two miles, something like that. And the final one. Yeah, so this was in the Badlands. Uh, again, I, I really was nice. uh, trying to get some uh, pictures of of uh, some astrophotography and, and uh, the clouds weren't, weren't uh, helping out, but uh, 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 did get some neat little shadowing of the clouds. Mm -hmm. Pretty. Yeah. And then William. Okay, so uh, Chris started out with a shot of the Namibia Desert, so I'm gonna continue that, <laughs> that theme. This yeah. is one of my shots from Namibia. I call this knife edge. And it's kind of a quintessential uh, shot of, of sand dunes with the early morning sun coming up. But I love how that very sharp line between yeah. the light and dark comes through. That's a that cool is, that is That's really nice. Yeah. Yeah. That is. And this okay, is. I call, I call this a moon dancer. We walked into a show in Shenzhen, China when we were there for visiting some friends. And it's kind of a big talent show, like you can see in Las Vegas, something like this. And I was in the back of the theater, had my camera with me. The theater was completely dark. I, Focused it on this dancer, and I took the picture, and I was amazed that it even turned out. Mm -hmm. But uh, you can see her mm -hmm. with the light in the cool. background, and her shadows in the foreground, and you pick up the little lights, and you can even see some kind of fog in the in the picture. So I was surprised it even turned out, but uh, I thought it was a cool picture. Yeah, that is a cool yeah. picture. And there's a lesson here. Uh, I give credit where credit's due. My wife actually took this picture. She was in Greece about a week ago, uh -huh. and uh, she was up on. This is the. Uh, Athena Nike temple on top of the Acropolis, and she snapped this picture. And uh, I'm calling this the Shady Lady. <laughs> <laughs> how appropriate, yeah. Yeah, that's right. I like how this, 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 the sun was nearly high in the sky, it was casting a few shadows across the faces of the, of the statue and on the left hand side. And then the one in the back is almost completely in silhouette. And so I thought it was kind of an interesting composition, actually. That, that, it yeah, is. Yeah. You said this was two weeks ago that you took this photo? My wife took it. She was in Greece with a, some friends on a vacation. Uh, she just got back a week ago. Oh, okay. Excellent. My daughter's headed there in another week. Oh, okay, great. This is in Athens. Where's she going? Do you know? She's going to Athens. She has her in-laws live in Athens, so she's okay. going to visit Athens. And they're going to do some resort, uh, visit a resort and all, and stay and visit friends. But they are centered in um, north of Athens, and I can't remember the, the name of it. Maybe Mike can. But anyway, yeah, Athens has been very popular this year. It has, yeah, it's very busy. Well, Greece is wide open. It's one of the few European countries that are wide open. But it's hot there right now. Oh, Brutally yeah. hot. It is. Yeah. Coming back, uh, we ran into uh, people from Hawaii that were actually headed to Greece in one of our layovers. So it is very popular. Mm -hmm. So, Mike. You're muted. Mike, you're muted. <laughs> I can hear him in the background. But okay, yeah, I'm there. sorry. Uh, <laughs> this We're talking about shadow. So this is the shadow of the moon uh, on the sun. And mm. those little um, pink, pinkish looking or reddish looking little protuberances are actually the mountains from the uh, moon that are showing up. And that's called the diamond at that point. Mm. Wow. And that's another picture. This this is later on in the eclipse uh, where you see the photosphere from the sun shining up. Yeah. Um, this is this is the time when Emily took photos of the shadows on the on the ground. This is totality. Yeah. Wow. And uh, we just got back from a trip uh, with our daughter. We had a good time up in the Catskills. Huh. And there's a really uh, neat uh, park called Storm King. It's a architecture park and um, they've got all kinds of uh, really neat uh, outdoor sculptures and this one is of the Buddha and that's my daughter with her husband and my two grandsons sitting there in the shade. Cool. Yep. They also have a really cool mirror fence which eventually I'll share a picture of that but that was really cool this would be a neat place to go to it's huge how many acres mike do you remember oh 50 or 60 it's, it's really a big place yeah it it was really it was interesting we really enjoyed it where is it 
This is in uh, Catskills. It's about an hour and a half north of New York City. Okay. So it's at the it's in the foothills. Right on the Hudson Hills. River area, valley. Right. Yeah. Huh? There is so much to see there. I was really we've never really done vacationing. We've always kind of stayed in the city, but getting away from the city, there was so much more to do than what you have time to do. We even toured a maple syrup um, little called the Sugar Shack and found out about maple syrup and got samples. It was it was a lot of- Then fun. we stayed at a working farm. There was a German guy that uh, he's, he's never farmed in his life and uh, he decided to start a farm. <laughs> He's got bees and goats and uh, chickens, and the kids really had a good time there. Yeah. And he also said he had a, he was a goat father. He had to go to visit his uh, first birthing of a goat. <laughs> uh, it was fun. He was a character. Yeah. So we're getting to the end. These are mine. Um, I call this the kissing shadows. There was a photographer. Uh, the Japanese tend to go on honeymoon vacations and they wear the wedding dress and they go to many popular places, hire a photographer to take photos of their, this is like their honeymoon, I guess. And he, the, the photographer was over here and I, we happened to be walking by and I noticed the shadows of the two kissing. So this is the shadow lovers and that was in Prague. Nice job. And then here we go, the Earth's shadow on the moon. This is a lunar eclipse. And this is from 2019, I think, when we had the, the full eclipse. The recent eclipse was, it, the total eclipse was at the horizon. So you really couldn't see it. You could get all of the different um, stages, but you couldn't get this. So this was my first attempt at putting them all together into um, a composite. Beautiful. Nice. And wow. this is Notre Dame de Paris gallery. I'm not sure exactly what it, that's called a gallery, but you can see the, the cathedrals off to the back. Of course, you know, it, it burned um, yeah. a couple of years ago. So I'm not sure how much of this has survived, but this is actually, I, I, for whatever reason, I had my 5D Mark III and I took a movie of this. And so this is actually a, um captured frame from that movie so oh, that's, that's something to think about when you're traveling is taking a movie and then capturing a frame yeah kathleen can you back up two shots yeah one of the things i really i was looking at this shot i really like it i like the little statue also on the 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 the, 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 the wall mm. and it's almost like he's saying don't look at this. This is a private moment. <laughs> yeah. it's, very, it's very subtle. It was like I looked at that and I thought, oh, how'd she get this statue in there? So, uh, I hadn't even thought of that, but yeah, you're it's right. very nice. <laughs> oh, thank you. That's a compliment, Chris, coming from you. I mean, wow. So that was a that was one of those serendipities. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so we're back to the very final um slide. Our next meeting is supposed to be August 17th. Uh, we at, Currently, we don't have a program or a speaker. So depending on what we can work on, uh, we may just go ahead and just cancel it. I don't know. What are, what are, what's everybody's thoughts on this? I know there's several groups uh, in that kind of take the summers off. We don't. And I know the, the Woodlands doesn't. Um, but if we don't have a, a speaker, would we want to just have a meeting anyway, and maybe talk about South Dakota, use that as, as a forum for anyone who's going? Sure. Yes. Sure. Yeah, I, mean, I think that's a good idea. So We could still do the share and learn also. Yeah. yeah and yeah. we could still do the share and learn, but we could, yeah. we could use it as just a, let's, let's, Talk about South Dakota, even if you don't, if you're not going, some of the stuff would probably still be good for you, but um, I think that would work, wouldn't it? Yeah. Okay. So I think we, Jim, I think we kind of have a subject. Yeah. We'll just uh, be a review of the upcoming trip. Yeah. We can talk about the itinerary things that. Yeah. Things rather that than having, rather than having another separate Zoom, we'll just use the August meeting for it. Yeah. There are, how many members are going like 14? That's a lot. That's a big group. Yeah. Yeah, I think you might want to think about just having a photo topic, a short one. Um, 
how it, uh, well, I mean, I mean, we could talk about um, you know, taking landscape photos and stuff, mm -hmm. uh, you know, gear and equipment that you might need. We are staying later. The, the moon is not optimal. The sky is not optimal at that time, but we are staying a few days later in hopes of getting maybe some star photography, depending on the weather. Uh, but they're looking, I, I mean, I sat down and I actually started looking at the map and all the things. Most of the stuff is about an hour away from uh, Rapid City. So it's, it's all very doable. But you're talking, if you go, I think it's east, it's the Badlands. If you go south, it's um, Custer State Park and another uh, wind cave. If you go west, it's into the Black Hills. The Mount Rushmore is kind of south also. So, I mean, there is so much to do there that I, I think we're not going to get everything done. But I think no. it would be nice to sit down and talk about it and just get um, well, questions asked and, and things. We were, we were planning a series of meetings, uh, Kathy. Uh, one, Ron had uh, just kicked this off by suggesting uh, uh, sort of a beginner's photographer's thing, especially for Canon, uh, mm -hmm. to talk about the equipment and, and, and settings and all that kind of stuff. Then we had another idea that the, 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 the photo club up in, up in that area wanted to meet with us. So that was another opportunity. We talked about meeting on Zoom with them. And yeah. then there was a third opportunity that came up that said, well, maybe we want to have a meeting before we talk to them and do some planning uh, specifically for that for that trip. Um, because some of us want to do some different things. We, we may want to yeah. go hiking, for example, things like that. Uh, yeah. So, but, you know, those are three sort of three separate ideas, three meetings. Um, do you do you think that this would be um, Steve? Do you think this would be a meeting that maybe we could do with the um, Rapid City Photo Club? Well, okay. So I, what I was thinking of in talking with one of the coordinators, uh, she said that it, it would probably be best if we did it uh, you know, in earlier September yeah. uh -huh. uh, to fit their schedule of what, what to, how, how to get it set up. Because that way they can kind of get it nailed down as to you know, how many people they, they need to uh, uh, get set up for certain things to, to help chaperone. Okay. So uh, I think it's a little early for that. Okay. So maybe this one we could use just to add like the second, the, the, the cannon would be separate because not everybody has a cannon. So that's more specific to certain people. Uh, maybe this one is just we sit down and we just uh open uh, open discussion we we let you and and jim talk about uh availabilities you know what we could do how much hiking you know where's the hiking and then kind of set up a preliminary agenda so then we could talk to the rapid city with with this agenda these are the things that we would like to do this is what our what we're interested in and and then go from there yeah and i did share with them the uh potential agenda that we originally threw out at everybody here and they agreed that that's a lot to try to do, jam into yeah. uh, you know, yeah. five or six days. So uh, yeah. they really want to get kind of like the top three things that they can help with. Uh, uh, locations. That, so maybe we can discuss that in more detail in our August yeah. meeting. And I will go through the my magazines because the last three months they've had, each month they've had a different article about Rapid City talking about um, the area uh, in Rapid City and around Rapid City. So that also might help for this August 17th. I can get that out beforehand. Okay. So, okay, so that yeah. sounds good. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, All right, so, so nature is, is the share and learn. And obviously this is one of my favorite photos from Hawaii. We were in a, a part where there, it's like a uh, an old Hawaiian area where they show how the Hawaiians actually lived. And this particular turtle was actually climbing out of the ocean, which is why his shell is so wet. Most of them sit there and bake in the sun and they're very dry and gray looking. And he was, he was alert to be being there. Like, what in the hell are you looking at? You know? And it, the, the angle of the, of the sand was like 40 degree. I mean, I was on my belly taking this and I was like, Oh my God. So, but this is one of my favorite photos. So nature is, is whatever you find in nature. It's, it's kind of your favorite photos. Um, your most difficult photos have a story with the photos. It should be fun. Uh, and again, um, 
I really want to thank everyone who volunteers and works. We, we depend on our volunteers. We depend on the people who make these meetings go. And it's hats off to all of you for everything that you do for the club. Every little bit helps. Every person who gets involved in it helps promote the club. So thank you all for, for doing that. And remember, keep posting on Facebook. That's a great way to tell us what you're doing. I would never have known Connie and Dave and John had ended up at, at that um, refuge looking at the, the uh, big thicket, looking at the plants. Um, so watching those is, is a great way. Plus, it's, it's also educational with all the programs and the things that you post. So anyway, are there any questions? Good. And, me. If, me. and thank you, Jim. That's a great, great uh, find. Yes. yes. Yeah, I, I was it was. So if, I, if anyone is interested in maybe looking into um, doing night photography that first week in August, just send me an email and let me know, and then we can plan it from there. So, Okay. Right. Well, thank you all. I will um, see you all soon, I guess. Okay, good.